previously we looked at the mechanism or the physiology by which the GCSPD enzyme is able to protect the red blood cells from becoming oxidant damage. In today's lesson, we are going to look at the mechanism of hemolysis in GCSPD deficient individuals. So in this case, the individual is deficient of the GCSPD enzyme. So we are going to look at how the deficiency results in hemolysis and hence hemolytic anemia. So the mechanism of hemolysis. Remember that what will cause the hemolysis is oxidative stress. We know that the GCSPD enzyme is involved in the production of this reduced um, NADPH which will in turn be utilized to convert oxidized glutathione to reduce glutathione. It is this reduced glutathione that exerts the antioxidant properties protecting the membrane of the red blood cell from oxidative damage. Mechanism of hemolysis, the red cells will hemolyze when the GCSPD enzyme which is supposed to indirectly generate reduced glutathione is deficient. Once this enzyme is deficient, there is going to be a decreased production of NADPH. NADPH, and what it implies is that decreased NADPH production will mean that there is going to be a decreased conversion of oxidized glutathione to reduce glutathione. And that means that we are going to have less or decreased levels of the reduced glutathione to exert an antioxidant or to destroy our oxidants or free radicals. The net result is that these free radicals or oxidants will cause damage to the cells. So the mechanism by which the GCSPD deficiency results in hemolysis and hence hemolytic anemia is the decrease or the reduction of the reduced glutathione. And the reduced glutathione levels can only be decreased only when the NADPH levels is what lowered or decreased. And the NADPH levels can only become decreased when the individual is deficient of the GCSPD1 enzyme. So what happens is that once we are having reduced glutathione levels, the, at the end of the day, once the levels are low, peroxidized or free radicals or the oxidants will now get an opportunity to exert their oxidative what effects causing damage to the red blood cells and that result in hemolysis that is the breakdown of the, the cells he means blood and lysis means what breaking so hemolysis is the breakdown of what cells once there is hemolysis and the bone marrow is not able to compensate for the destroyed cells, then anemia will occur. So apart from this first uh, mechanism, the other way is that hemoglobin molecules that are contained in the red blood cells are not immune to oxidative stress. In other words, once the red blood cells are exposed to oxidants, the hemoglobin molecules that are in the red blood cells will undergo oxidation. That is, there is going to be the conversion of the reduced hemoglobin to methemoglobin. Methemoglobin is the oxidized version of hemoglobin. The difference is reduced hemoglobin has ion in the plus two state, which is called the ferrous ion. And the methemoglobin has ion in the plus 3 state, which is called the ferric state. We define oxidation as the increase in oxidation number. So once there is the movement of ion from the plus 2 state to the plus 3 state, that is oxidation. And that is why methemoglobin is said to be the oxidized version of what hemoglobin so there is an oxidation of the hemoglobin molecules to methemoglobin and in the absence of the, the GCSPD enzyme 
what happens is that there is going to be a further conversion of this met hemoglobin to a substance called Hens bodies. And these Hens bodies will precipitate out of the red blood cells onto the surface of the red blood cells. And these red blood cells bearing the Hens bodies in circulation once they get to the spleen or the liver, the macrophages that are resident in the liver and the spleen, that these organs are part of the reticuloendothelial system. So the macrophages that are resident in these organs will identify all the red blood cells bearing the hands bodies as abnormal cells, and therefore these macrophages will engulf these red blood cells and destroy them through the process of phagocytosis. And the end result is that as many of the red blood cells are being destroyed and the bone marrow is unable to compensate, then anemia occurs. Now that we have looked at the hemolysis, how the GCSPD enzyme deficiency can result in the hemolysis. It is important we note under hemolysis that the, the GCSPD enzyme is actually not completely lacking in individuals who are GCSPD deficient or having the GCSPD defect. Some, the younger results of these individuals, I mean GCSPD deficient subjects, do have some GCSPD activity. So in the case of red blood cells, the younger cells are called reticulocytes. And these younger cells have some GCSPD activity. And the percentage is usually around 6%. And this percentage of GCSPD activity is enough to provide the normal reducing power of the uh, normal reducing power of our everyday needs when it comes to destroying the oxidants or the free radicals. But this particular um, protection is being lost when the GSSPD individual is being exposed to oxidants so like drugs. So the intakes of drugs such as um, sulfadoxin, paramitamine, or SP, or primaquine, what happens is that the oxidant stress becomes so much that it overwhelms the everyday normal reducing power coming from 6% of the young red cells known as reticulocyte. So when the cells are being exposed to oxidant drugs, the oxidative stress becomes so much that the cells are unable to withstand that, that the stress. And the end result is that there is oxidation of intracellular proteins, lipids, and other molecules resulting in hemolysis. So now that we have looked at the mechanism by which the GCSPD deficiency can result in the cell damage or can result in hemolysis, we actually want to look at the cell types that the GCSPD enzyme deficiency is being felt. In fact, the GCSPD enzyme deficiency does not only affect red blood cells, but it affects all the cells in general. But why red blood cells is actually being stressed the most is because the red blood cells has only one metabolic pathway. I mean the pentose phosphate pathway that produces NADPH, which is the only reducing agent that will be able to convert the oxidized glutathione to reduce glutathione to exhibit or exert its antioxidant properties. Unlike the other cells of the body, there are other metabolic pathways that will generate NADPH in addition to that which will be coming from the pentophosphate pathway. So the end result is that oxidative stress in the other cells become minimal because we have, to some extent, higher levels of the reduced glutathione in those cells as compared to the red blood cells because they have only the pentose phosphate pathway as the only soul or the only pathway producing NADPH 
to convert oxidized glutathione to reduce glutathione. So the red blood cells is most being stressed. And that is why we are doing the GCSPD test for, um, on the red blood cells, that the blood sample that has been taken, we want to find whether the GCSPD enzyme is deficient or not because red blood cells are most affected more as compared to the other cells of the body. So now let's look at the signs and symptoms of um, the GCSPD deficient individual. What are some of the signs and symptoms a deficient individual should be showing? And so the first one is hemolytic anemia. So there is going to be anemia in GCSPD deficient subject because when the red blood cells are being exposed to oxidants and the cells are being damaged through the process of oxidation, it is expected that the bone marrow, which is the production center of red blood cells, should compensate for the loss of the destroyed cells. Now, if so much red blood cells are being destroyed excessively and the bone marrow is not able to compensate for the destroyed red cells, then there is an imbalance and therefore anemia occurs. So anemia occurs when destruction of the red blood cells exceeds the production from the bone marrow. And because this anemia is occurring as a result of the breakdown of the red blood cell, that is hemolysis, then the anemia is specifically called hemolytic anemia. The other sign is jaundice. So there is going to be a jaundice because when the red blood cells are broken down, we know that hemoglobin molecules are being released. As the name implies, hemoglobin is made up of globin and then heme. The globin, which is a protein, is further broken down to form amino acids, and the amino acid will return to the amino acid word pool. Now, the heme, which is where the ion is located, the ion is taken away, and what is left is a porphyrin pigment, which undergo further processing through a series of reactions. We call it bilirubin metabolism to produce a yellow pigment called bilirubin. And bilirubin, because it's a yellow pigment and there is excessive breakdown of the red blood cells, we are going to be producing excessive levels of the bilirubin in the blood. And high levels of bilirubin in the blood is called hyper for high bilirubinemia, that is high levels of bilirubin in the blood. Now, when the blood is circulates and it gets to the surface of the skin, and the bilirubin gets deposited there, the skin surface appears yellow. Then again, on the sclera of the eyes of the individual, when bilirubin gets closer to the vessels that are connected to the sclera of the eye and get deposited in the sclera of the eye, the sclera of the eye appears yellowish, and that is jaundice. And the other one is hemoglobinuria. Once the red blood cells are being exposed to oxidative stress or oxidants intravascularly, and the oxidants causes damage to the membrane of the red blood cells, it means that the hemoglobin molecules are going to be released right inside the circulation. And once in circulation, the hemoglobin molecules are transported by a protein known as haptoglobin. So a haptoglobin is a hemoglobin transporter. Now, as many of the red blood cells are being destroyed or broken down, owing to the oxidative stress, it exceeds the haptoglobin carrying capacity. And once the capacity is being exceeded, then what it implies is that the hemoglobin will spill over in the kidneys, glomerulus, and hemoglobin in the urine is called hemoglobinuria. Urea means a condition of urine. So hemoglobin in urine is called hemoglobinuria. Now, let's look at the diagnosis of the GCSPD deficiency. How do we diagnose the GCSPD deficiency? So, we can diagnose the hemolytic anemia through full blood count and reticulocyte count to determination. 
So in the full blood count, it will offer us an opportunity to see the HB of the patient. And once the HB of the patient is low, anemia has been established. Then again, the red cell indices in the full blood count will also help us to classify the anemia. And so the red cell indices includes the mean cell volume, which is abbreviated as MCV, mean cell hemoglobin, which is the MCH, mean cell hemoglobin concentration, which is the MCAC. So in, in this SPD deficiency, the anemia is actually of the nomocytic nomochromic. Nomocytic implies that the cell sizes are normal. No means normal. So nomocytic, cytic means cell. So normal cell size. And the amount of hemoglobin contained in these normal cells are also normal. And therefore, that becomes nomochromic. Chrome means color. And therefore, once we have no amount of hemoglobin, it is called nomochromic. Recall that it is the hemoglobin that gives the red blood cell the characteristic red color. Hemoglobin is a red pigment. So if the re this red pigment are normal, we will get a normal color known as nomochromic. If the pigment level is low, then we are going to get a color lower than normal, and that is called hypochromic. But if the color is more, we get what is called hyperchromic. So we do the MVC and typically a GSSPD deficient individual who have developed hemolytic anemia will typically have a nomocytic nomochromic anemia. Then again, we can look at the reticulocyte count and the significance of looking at the reticulocyte count as part of the diagnosis of hemolytic anemia is because during hemolysis, the bone marrow will respond to the destruction of the red blood cells by releasing new red cells in circulation. And these new cells, which are younger red blood cells, are called reticulocytes. So these reticulocytes, the count will increase so an examination of a smear that reviews higher reticulocyte count implies that the individual is in the hemolytic what, crisis. So apart from reticulocyte count, we can as well do a peripheral uh, smear using uh, Romanowski staining using maybe the Leshman stain. And that will help us also see the reticulocytes as polychromatic cells. So once we see polychromasia and the degree of polychromasia is high, then that implies that the individual is undergoing what? Hemolysis or it is in hem hemolytic crisis. Then the next diagnostic step is a screening test, which is actually a qualitative screening method, which is used to measure or to assess the activity of the GCSPG1 enzyme. And so this is actually a common investigation that is being performed in the laboratory using the methylene blue reagent and the sodium nitrite glucose reagent. So this is a qualitative screening test. And then we look at a confirmatory test, which is actually the quantitative measurement of the GSSPD enzymatic activity. And then we also have molecular tests, which will actually detect the GSSPD gene mutation. And that appears to be also more confirmatory. So that is it about the diagnosis of the GSSPD enzyme. Thank you.